of the Remember Group, and we're going to be talking about brand loyalty and point systems for your dealership clients. Of course, we're going to be having our strategy session and the email grab bag, so let's get started with today's show. I'm excited to welcome to today's show, Tim Clemens. He's the VP at the Remember Group. Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. People who've been watching this show know that I'm pretty firm about dealers developing a why buy message, why service, why finance, why trade in. And I wanted to have you on the show because, well, many dealers think they have a unique experience at the dealership when, honestly, they don't. Right. And uh, I don't want this why buy to be uh, a trite phrase that is overlooked. Tim, the Remember Group is relatively new for most of our viewers. Right. Even though you've been in business over 13 years, this year has been your coming out party, really mm -hmm. focusing on telling your fantastic story. So for viewers today, give us an overview of what the Remember Group does. Well. Uh, you know, Remember Group has is, is been around for a long time, and if any, at any point you can come into our office and you're, you're going to hear us uh, talking technology, you know, we'll just be talking about SQL calls or <laughs> something about, you know, just something really geeky, you know. And it occurred to us this year that we've spent a lot of time developing just this really amazing product. It's integrated, it's compelling, it engages with customers. We just really forgot to tell everybody about it. So uh, a few months ago, our CEO comes into my office and he says, Tim, I want you to concentrate on getting our name out there. So that's what I'm doing now. And it's interesting about that why buy that you talk about. If you look at a study that Bain & Company did a few years back, 80% of companies believe that they deliver a superior customer experience, but only 8% of their customers agree. So that's why it's really important to develop that why buy. And you're here because we have shared customers that are raving about mm -hmm. your solution. Right. And I visit hundreds of dealers a year and such a small percentage have invested in a true value proposition, sure. a package that truly differentiates themselves. But your company has taken this one step further. So to put it in the bigger picture, mm -hmm. we have customers coming, buying from us every day, servicing mm -hmm. their car every day, and we're in a reward-based society. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, a frequent flyer on Delta and United. Sure, me too. I use my Starbucks app almost every day. Me too. And yet dealers seem to be missing the importance of a loyalty program. Tim, why is that the case? Well, uh, Brian, I think we're in an old school business. Right. You know, you see a lot of dealers doing some really, really progressive things, but there are a lot of holdouts. Right. Right. Customer loyalty is a relatively new movement. It involves a lot of technology. Yes. You got to have a forward thinking marketing group, you know, and what we're stuck with is a lot of, you know, a lot of dealers who are just holding on to those 30 car guys, you know, kind of keeping everything kind of, I don't know. The way it was. Tell you, the way it used to be. Yeah. And before the show, we had an interesting conversation I wanted to share with today's viewers because I think when we share the story, our viewers will get it. If it wasn't for my United 1K status mm -hmm. or my Delta Platinum status, right. every time I fly, I'd probably be shopping another carrier who's, who's offering the best deal now. Right. But I know that if I fly a number of flights with United, the 1K is going to get me priority boarding, mm -hmm. I'm going to get upgraded more often, right. uh, access to certain privileges. Car dealers have never really saw themselves in the same light. Is this possibly why, Tim, that when someone goes to buy a car, they're so open to buy at any dealership. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no advantage to stay loyal to any one dealer. No, that is that is absolutely correct. There's, you know, you look. Let me give you an example. All right, you go to a dealership website, uh, and when you're shopping around for a car, absolutely, you're you're gonna you're gonna look at every single website. I saw a study recently that showed that you know there's on average like twenty some touch points. Right. When you go and buy a car, you That's know, right. so you're looking around. So let me give you an example. You go to a website and a coupon pops up for 200 bucks off your down payment. That's a very common thing. We That's see right. that all the time. I'm going to click away from that. I mean, that's something that every dealer is going to offer me. 
But when I've earned $200 in points, you can look at all sorts of consumer studies, like endowed progress and the endowment effect, that when I feel like I've earned something, when I feel like I have this perceived progress towards a goal, I'm over twice as likely to buy from that dealership. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I look at my own behavior because mm -hmm. I love marketing, but I'm a student of my own behavior. And sure. I could buy coffee anywhere. Mm -hmm. But the fact that every 10 coffees I buy, I get a free star, yeah. as stupid as it may be, I, I drink a double espresso, it's a $2 drink. I'm changing my behavior because, well, I'm kind of competing. Right. And it's such a brilliant thing. So the Remember Group has created an automotive-centric loyalty rewards program that's integrated into the dealer's DMS yep. and customizable. Let's start with some basics. When a customer comes in to buy a car or service of their car, mm -hmm. they get entered into the Remember loyalty program, mm -hmm. which is branded for the dealer. Absolutely. What happens next as a first-time buyer or a first-time service customer? Well, when a customer gets enrolled into the program, it's automatically, we're integrated in with the DMS so that a customer, uh, we get their information right away. The next day they're gonna get an email, hey, congratulations, you've been entered into the PCG reward system. Got it. All right, you're gonna earn points for every time you come in for service. Here, we've given you a little points to start out with. Right. Uh, here's your balance. Don't forget, when you make referrals, we're gonna award you points. When you uh, make uh, fill out surveys, you know, that's what the beautiful thing is that we can incentivize these behaviors. It's the behaviors that dealers want. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that we talked about prior to the show, I think it's worth repeating. Sure. When employees do a great job, mm -hmm. there's always the challenge from a boss, like, do you give them cash? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you give someone 500 bucks or 1,000. Mm -hmm. But when you give someone a watch, that they wear every day. Right. Or you send them on a trip that their spouse or their girlfriend or boyfriend has a fantastic time. Right. They tell that story mm -hmm. over and over again. And we were talking about referrals. Right. Dealers love referrals. Referrals close at a significantly higher rate. Oh, it's the lifeblood of a sales department. And yeah. higher gross. Mm -hmm. So in some states that allow bird dogging, yeah. um, what's better, to give them $100 or say $200 worth of points. Mm -hmm. The key point that you brought up, I want you to repeat, why is the points a better alternative? Well, because we, we let a customer know that they've earned something towards something, right? Right. And in the case of a bird dog feed, you know, we've had dealers come to us and say, we love the bird dog, we can't do it anymore because our legislators have made it illegal for right. some reason. And I say, no problem. You, you don't need to burn down, you just give them 100 bucks in points. It's got the same perceived value, and guess what, Brian, they gotta come back to you to spend those points. And that's the point that hit me. It was like, we're having dealers give away cash, right. um, which may or may not create some loyalty, but we have no control where they spend it. Right. We know that they have to service their car. We know that they need new tires and brakes. Mm -hmm. These points will get them back in, and I love the fact that it, it forces the consumer to develop a consistent cycle mm -hmm. of visiting for service and I'm building more points, I use my two bird dogs, hey, my brakes are free. Yeah. I mean, that's right. huge. Right. So what type of reporting does a consumer in this loyalty program get? How often? What's the frequency in which your platform is going to connect with that customer? I mean, how often are we going to engage with the customer? Yeah. Generally speaking, we recommend you're gonna engage with them right after they come in for service and they earn points and make sure that they know that they've been rewarded for their service, right? It's and very important. And they're for loyalty, right? right? And then every 60 to 90 days, we're gonna make sure we shoot them out a message that says, hey, don't forget, at, at uh, ABC Motors Rewards, you have these points that are available. You know, kind of like a, a of reward mind. statement you get from right. um, a, uh, a credit card right. or a frequent flyer, right? Yep, absolutely. Right. Now, for a dealer who's watching today's show and is somewhat skeptical, because I've heard this, yeah, and uh, even though people listen to every word I say, yeah, absolutely. no, no, of course not, but I have people who just flat out say, Brian, that's a waste of time. Tim, you don't have to name names because I know some of your biggest success stories like to remain uh, confidential right, and sure. we have shared clients so I know they're real 
what are some of the results of somebody who embarks and gets behind a loyalty program, meaning it's just not signing up with you, but their sales team, their service advisors, everyone buys in yeah, sure. to, hey, we reward our customers, just like Starbucks mm -hmm. does, just like United does or Delta does. What's the results on the bottom line? Okay. I'll give you a few, actually. Great. I got a dealership group in uh, Canada. They came out and opened their program and gave everybody $200 in points, just as a thank you for being a customer, everybody in okay. their existing database. And that one year, they doubled their email database, and they sold 188 cars, just based on points. Uh, one dealership group that I know doesn't mi actually mind me mentioning their name is Kenshaw Lexus Toyota, okay. single point in Toronto, and they are killing it. They're looking at a quarter of their vehicle sales some month. They can directly attribute to points. Great. So when we say that, let's just mm -hmm. stop. When we say a quarter of their sales, these are people who may be buying a $30,000 car, yeah. but they have 500 bucks in points, mm -hmm. and their communication is, I want to buy a car and apply my points. Yep. That's fantastic. Tell me yeah, some more. Absolutely. We just completed a promotion in, uh, it, well, I'll just say in the Midwest. They specifically did not, because they don't want to give their competitors you know, any <laughs> right. ideas. But we just wrapped this up in September, and it was very exciting results. So we, we, we looked at the customers who redeemed their rewards points for service and the new customers. Customers who redeemed their rewards points, their ROs were over double the amount yes. and the amount of cash that they paid out that day, you know, we removed the redemption yes. on the file was still $20 more than new customers. It makes complete sense Absolutely. because we know that the reason why the supermarket puts the bread and the eggs and the milk in the back of the right. supermarket is because those are those frequent items. They walk down the aisles, uh, being on the end of an aisle is mm -hmm. a huge opportunity for people to grab and go. Right. So what we're saying is by creating this point system, even if that point system says you, you've earned $40, mm -hmm. that's $40 of a hook mm -hmm. to get that person to come in and service a car. And if they're like me, mm -hmm. who avoids servicing the car at any, right. I'm just traveling too much, when I go in, Whatever the promotion or reminder is, I'm going right. to say, look, check the entire vehicle. It's been you know, six months since I've been in here. Yeah. So it makes sense, mm -hmm. I think, that uh, when you create this loyalty program, if you're earning points, it really creates a degree of stickiness that dealers don't have today. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, when, when, when customers feel like they have a perceived progress towards a goal, they feel like they've earned something. I talked about the endowment effect earlier. It's, it's that, that thing when customers feel like they've earned something, they put in work towards it. They're, they're not likely to let it go. By the way, average redemption on a car, it's, it's not $500 or $1,000 or anything. It's just 200 bucks. 200 Two hundred dollars on such a small ticket item. Yeah, and if you think about it, and I'm not here to run the the budget for right. dealers, and dealers hate when people count their money, but if the people are earning these rewards, mm -hmm. we know that the average cost per retail sale for marketing is somewhere three, four hundred bucks, and mm -hmm. in California it could be five, six, seven hundred. Well, NADA stats six hundred dollars at per car deal. Right, mm -hmm. and. When you think about this, hold on, we're creating a better brand experience for right. all our customers. We're creating an incentive for them to stay loyal. Mm -hmm. And when they do redeem, it's not because they've amassed so many points, it's just they are part of the experience. Right, they're part of the experience and, and they've spent all that money up front. They've been very yes. good customers. Yeah, and, and if you wanna if you wanna talk about bottom line numbers, you've actualized all that revenue up front. You're not giving out a ten percent discount service to have your customers just go out the door and never to come That's back. That's right. You know, they've they've still got a perceived value of that same amount and now they're yes. tied back to the dealership. Well, if you would have told me years ago before mobile apps that I would go buy coffee at a store or look for a coffee chain right. um, just to get a gold star, yeah. I would say are you kidding me? Yeah. But I often have the choice to pay for a coffee with some cash. Mm -hmm. or, I'm like, no, I got to use my mobile app. I got to get the right. star. It's so crazy. Yet it is. car dealers haven't realized that we're. This is part of our culture now. Yeah. Everyone has some loyalty. I was just buying from Macy's recently, and there's right. a, a a company called Plenty. 
Oh, yeah. And yeah, the no plenty problem. rewards. Now, some gas stations are signing up and mm -hmm. Macy's. So there must be a bigger movement. Ladies and gentlemen who are watching today's show need to understand. They need to be part yeah. of this loyalty movement. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't stress this enough. Look, there's, there's three levels of why buy, if you ask me. There's no why buy. That's your first level. Right. Right. There's a second level of why buy, which is, I see it all the time, Brian. I, you know, it's, it's my job to t reach out to car dealerships, and part of that is, is researching, right? And what I see most of, most of the time, your, their why buy is family owned and operated for 60 years. Right. Great service, great prices, friendly staff, comfortable waiting room, free Wi Fi. Well, guess what? I'm sorry. That's, that's really great that you're trying to deliver that superior customer experience. That's great. That's great. The problem is, is that 80% of companies believe that they deliver a customer experience when only 8% of their customers agree. And you know what? As you read that off, yeah. it sounds like you, you watched one of my previous videos. Mm -hmm. um, I call those white noise. Yeah. Because what you just said, basically 70% of dealers say on their website, well, we treat you like family. We're family yeah. owned and operated. We have a comfortable service on us. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, right. the manufacturers are mandating multi-million dollar yeah. facilities. Of course the waiting area is going to be clean. Of course the bathrooms are going to be clean. Of course you're offering yeah. coffee. Okay, so if everyone's saying the same thing, it becomes white noise. Well, not only that, but you talk about the manufacturers and, and their requirements on these dealerships. I tell you what, man, you look at a you look at a Honda dealership, they all look the same. Yep. Their inventory is the same. Their prices are the same. They're, right. They have to give good service. They have to have competitive prices. Same thing with Toyota dealerships, right. GM dealerships, Nissan dealerships. Right. They're all managed. The only thing that's different is, now do you want the model of dealership with the door on the left or the right? That's right. And that's why the Remember Group um, is so critical mm -hmm. because dealers who understand the competitive angle and but more importantly understand today's consumer mm -hmm. need the technology and this is the key yeah. they don't have millions of dollars to create an app like Starbucks and, yeah. and they're not in the technology business they're in the people business right. and where you come in is you bring the technology the process to help them be better mm -hmm. at the people business um, the program is customizable. Mm -hmm. We talked about that, that dealers can decide how they want to communicate, email, mm -hmm. direct mail, yep. whether they want to print a card or not. Everything mm -hmm. is customized. Mm -hmm. What type of commitment are you looking for from dealers who want to develop a real, meaty, measurable, and profitable loyalty program? Well, generally, we look at no, no money down. We develop all the software ourselves, which is it's not easy to do, but we're experts at it, right? That's right. So we take these 13 years of experience in and we hand it to a dealer and say, hey, listen, Mr. Dealer, here's your loyalty program. They do literally no work unless they want to, except for saying, yep, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. I want that change, that change, that change. And there's, there's a little bit of, of investment on our part. So we sure. just look for a year commitment. Great. And a loyalty program, as you know, is that's that's a long-term marketing strategy. That's, that's not. Right. That's it's not, not a knee-jerk reaction. Let me throw in a loyalty program so I sell more cars next month. So the question here is, dealers who have signed up. Mm -hmm. The proof. I always say is in the pudding. Sure. Um, dealers love to cancel products. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's almost in our culture. Mm -hmm. What type of retention rate do you have in the specific automotive industry of mm -hmm. customers who've signed up with your product? We're over 90%. That's great. Yeah. So Tim, this is why I wanted to have you on the show. Not only do we have common customers, not only do I believe that dealers need a why buy message that's not white noise, not only do I believe looking at my own behavior that mm -hmm. I'm motivated to compete for loyalty rewards, whether it's my United, Delta, Starbucks, or now sure. Macy's, yeah, right. um, it makes me feel good. Absolutely. Makes me feel great. Uh, when I'm, I have an Amazon uh, Visa card, and I get my points, and mm -hmm. when my son needs something, I'm like, ooh, I got that for free. And, and you know what I think? Hey, that credit card's a cool credit card. Right, there's you a little know, more to it, isn't there? That's right, I earned it. Right. But then obviously, you know, you say, well, all credit cards do that, but at the time you're purchasing, you feel really good mm -hmm. that you were part of this program. And that's why I want to have you on the show because no one really has this type of managed point system mm -hmm. uh, in a turnkey fashion that's really delivering outstanding results. How do dealers watching today's show learn more about this platform? They can call me directly. It's 866-414-CLUB. 
that rings to my cell phone, by the way, which, is, which is how I deal with all of our clients. We are the most uh, not only flexible and nimble company that dealers will ever are ever going to work for. Of course, I'm a little bit biased. Yeah, of course. But you, we're also the most responsive. Right. And what about your website? Where can they get more information on the web? RememberGroup.com. Right. Well, Tim, I hope that this opportunity for you to be on the show is also a springboard for motivating the automotive industry mm -hmm. that we need to learn from outside the automotive industry to stay competitive. The trend of loyalty cards and programs mm -hmm. and points is absolutely confirmed. It's time for dealers it's to time. take action. It's absolutely time. Great. Tim, thanks so much for being on the show. I look forward to having you on the show a year from now. I want to see what's going on in this evolution of the automotive industry embracing a reward system because I think we're just at the beginning. Sounds great. I can't wait. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for right. being on the show. Appreciate it. And now for today's strategy session. Tim Clemens came on today's show to encourage viewers to see if their Why Buy program was really something substantial or was it white noise, and I couldn't agree with Tim more. When I look at my own behavior and how I make buying choices for airfare based on reward programs, where I buy my coffee based on point programs. It's time for dealers to leverage this human trait, this personality, this trend, and create a stronger program to retain and attract new clients. But related to that has been many conversations we've had on this show about creating a clear why buy set of videos, and that was why buy from us as a dealership, why service your car at our dealership? Why trade in your car at our dealership? Why finance your next vehicle with our dealership? Those five core videos we've talked about over and over again, yet I'm still surprised that dealers haven't implemented these videos on their website. Remember, just because you have a rewards or points program, you still have to clearly state and remind consumers of your value proposition. Remember that video is a tremendous way to get your message communicated in a mobile world. Meaning, consumers don't want to read your life story, but they surely will watch a quick video on why they should service their car more often, or why your dealership will give them top dollar for their trade-in because you're using market price data, it's fair and transparent. Ladies and gentlemen, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Don't think that consumers understand the car business. When you take the time to explain how your dealership operates, how you're going to help them locate and decide on their next vehicle, how to finance their next vehicle, how to get top dollar for the vehicle they own in video, it helps support a larger why buy message. And then when they come in and when they buy and when they service these rewards and points programs, as you've already heard, get people coming back to buy the next car with just only a few hundred dollars in points. This is an important lesson. Why is the automotive industry fighting so many public trends outside the automotive industry on how to reward consumer loyalty and how to incent consumers to come back more often. So in today's strategy session, I challenge you to do a full discussion at your dealership on your why buy message, your why buy rewards program. And I bet if you take action today, it's not an overnight change, but you will see over time that you will have more repeat and referral business and a more profitable dealership. And that's today's strategy session. And now for today's email grab bag question. A general manager wrote in to ask Brian, should our dealership invest in a custom mobile app? Well, since we're talking about customer loyalty and points and reward systems, well, a mobile app surely is relevant to this discussion. Not all mobile apps are worthy to stay on your phone. 
you know this yourself. You've downloaded an app, played with it a little bit, and say, ah, I'm never going to use this again, and you delete it. It's not so much whether a dealership should invest in a mobile app. The question I have for you is why should the consumer keep your mobile app on their phone? Now, the Remember Group, of course, integrates their point system with a mobile app platform so you can talk with them about how their reward system can be visualized on a custom mobile app. But remember, a mobile app has to have value all the time. A reward system could easily be as effective uh, just by emailing a monthly or quarterly statement. So you need to ask yourself, what is your marketing strategy to the mobile app? What are you going to be engaging with the consumer and how they can engage back? First of all, one directional mobile apps, well, I wouldn't even waste my time. You really want bi-directional apps so that you can remind someone of service and let them book the service. You can remind them of an equity mining offer and they can confirm and book an appointment, meaning it has to be bi-directional. And also, it takes a concerted effort to keep that app communication going, meaning it's not a set it and forget it process. So if you don't have an organized marketing strategy, if you don't have a customer drip marketing campaign strategy, if you are not really working on making that app valuable, don't waste the time. It will just be deleted off the phone. Now you remember things like the Starbucks app, each week there's a new song or game that people can download for free. Every time you purchase something with the app, it gives you a little reminder of what you've purchased. It gives you a star count. It's interactive. You can locate a store and now I can even order my coffee and have it wait for me as soon as I walk in the door. Do you understand the value of that app is, well, well thought out. It saves me time, I don't have to stand in line. Every 10th drink I order, I get a free one. And of course, I get free music or games, again, that are exploiting the mobile platform. If there's no value in your mobile app, don't waste the time, it will be deleted. If you have a question you'd like to submit for the email grab bag and I use it on the show, I'll send you a free copy of my latest book, Mastering Automotive Digital Marketing. It's the first textbook in the automotive industry and being used at Northwood University to educate the next generation of automotive marketing professionals. Thank you so much for watching today's show and we'll see you next week on Auto Marketing. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Auto Marketing Now.